I'm Kyle, and I study entomology, the study of insects, at Cornell University. Insects are some of the most abundant and diverse groups of organisms on this planet. They inhabit every single continent and perform essential roles as pollinators, waste disposers, and food sources for other organisms that allow ecosystems to function. In the process of conquering every continent, insects have adopted some of the most bizarre shapes and forms imaginable. But with a closer look, these appendages and ornaments have humble roots as hairs, legs, and wings. I am fascinated with insects, especially with how diverse they are while still keeping the same basic insect body plan. But before we dive into specific examples of these wonderful creatures, let's take a peek at what actually goes into making an insect. If you've ever looked closely at an insect, you'll know that their bodies are divided into three parts. A head, a thorax, and an abdomen. Scientists believe that the ancestor to insects, their distant relative, looked a lot like a millipede or a centipede, with many, many similar looking segments. Studies that have looked at how insects develop from an egg to an adult suggest that over time, segments have fused together to form the familiar three-part body plan we're all used to seeing in today's insects. The head is formed from six merged segments that form the mouth parts and palps, which insects use to break down and taste their food, as well as the antenna, which are used for feeling around in dark places and detecting odors in their environment. The thorax is three fused segments, each having one pair of legs. And most insects, the last two segments of the thorax also have wings, but these can be modified depending on the group of insects in question. If you look at a butterfly, the front and hind wings are on different segments. In a fly, the front wings are pretty normal, yet the hind wings have been reduced to structures known as halteres, which help the insect fly smoothly. Other insects have lost their wings entirely. The abdomen consists of 11 or 12 fused segments which protect the majority of an insect's organs. The abdomen is very important in tasks relating to digestion and reproduction as it houses an insect's stomach and reproductive organs. In each region of an insect's body, particular segments have been modified to fit a certain purpose. Think of having many segments as giving insects a little bit of evolutionary wiggle room to modify their structures to adapt to new environments. Imagine one day if you woke up to find that your arms had been transformed into jagged pincers. This would be great for catching your next meal, but not great for doing many of your other favorite activities. But what if this change took place on an organism with many legs and many segments? The organism loses one pair of legs that become the new structure, but has many more pairs to perform the original task. This allows the organism to maintain the new structure and pass it on to its offspring, where it will change little by little and perhaps become incredibly important to the organism's success. In fact, scientists believe that the same kind of scenario took place in the centipedes, whereby their first set of limbs were modified into venom claws, which they used to inject paralyzing toxins into their prey, which they used to then suck up the contents. This adaptation has allowed the centipedes to become top predators in soil environments. Insects are invertebrates, which means that they don't have an internal skeleton like us humans. Instead, they have an exoskeleton, or cuticle, that's composed of a compound called chitin, Chitin helps to keep an insect's body watertight, and the insides in, and the outsides out. But insects face an interesting dilemma. When your entire body is covered by a rigid exoskeleton, how do you move around? Well, not all chitin is made equally. Chitin in the joints is thinner, which makes it bendy. Flexible joints equal movable limbs. And so the thickness in the chitin determines how movable a certain part of an insect is. In addition to being thinner in the joints, chitin is also thinner in the abdomen, which allows for expansion during respiration and feeding, as well as being thicker in the head, which allows for protection against predators. Just like independent segments can evolve into new structures, parts of the leg can do the same thing. In fact, if you look at insect antennae, you can see that they have many similarities to an insect leg. These sensory structures are actually just very highly modified limbs. Today, insects just have six limbs which are used for locomotion, feeding, and other important tasks. Each one is specifically modified to perform a function in that insect's particular life. Take this mole cricket, for instance. The wide palm and long, tough claws of this foreleg allow it to dig rapidly into the soil to search for food and hide from predators. Just like ground and tree crickets, mole crickets sing too. They use their large claws to dig into the soil and create mini amphitheaters, which they use to project their calls as far as possible and attract females. Another insect with crazy limbs is one of my favorites, the mantispid. Looking at this insect, you may think it's most closely related to a praying mantis or maybe even a wasp, but in fact, neither of these would be true. Mantispids are lacewings, which means that they're most closely related to beetles. 
Mantispids look like chimeras, a hodgepodge of insect parts seemingly haphazardly thrown together, but they're really very good at what they do. These insects walk using their hind two pairs of legs and stalk and hunt their prey, much like a praying mantis would. Just like praying mantids, these insects have evolved the same solution to best grab prey, long hooked forelegs. These types of forelimbs are called raptorial forelegs, and many groups of insects have converged upon this structure in order to capture prey. When groups of organisms have similar looking structures, but not because they inherited them from a common ancestor, we call this conversion evolution. The common ancestor of these two groups did not have wings, but both converged on or came up with the same basic structure of a broad flat shape of a wing to move the air and generate lift. This folding gives insects access into tight spaces, like in the ground and underneath bark. In other groups, the wings themselves are modified. For example, in the beetles, the first set of wings have become a tough outer casing, while the hind wings are reserved for flight. A little bit of evolutionary tweaking over millions of years' times can add up to huge differences between organisms that used to be very closely related to one another.